Okay, the purpose of this video is so that you know how to add your shared calendar environment to Thunderbird. Once you've done that, you'll find your access to the data is much faster because Thunderbird stores a synchronized copy of everything on your local computer, so you're not always going over the web to display every single character. It also adds a, an increased layer of search functionality, which can come in handy. So the process is, first you start with the user who actually created the calendar, the shared calendar to begin with. And then you can come over on the right here. Let's take this shared work schedule, which has been created by this user, and we'll share their calendar. I'm going to type in the user service. We're going to allow them access to the shared calendar. It finds the service department, and we're going to click on that. Okay, so now we see service department is down here, and uh, we can choose whether we allow them to edit the shared calendar or just view its contents. So now service department officially has access to the shared calendar, which are those things that you see in this particular environment. Uh, everything red is a shared calendar environment. Now, we're going to close that shared link now. We can give service access to any or all of these. Shared vessel movements, maybe in this case we want service to have access to that too. And you notice it takes the calendar a few seconds to query the server, find the credentials, and bring it forward. Once that's done, all you got to do is shrink it back up and go to any other calendar that you would like this person or department to have access to. Okay, so now for the next part of the equation. You log in. I strongly recommend you use Firefox for this because of Chrome caching issues. Um, but if you log in, and uh, I really do recommend you try this with Firefox uh, if you have problems in one of the other browsers with your username and password and choose the calendar link. So you see the shared calendar over here. If I click on that, we see all the entries that were already there shared by uh, the people that use that calendar. I can add an event to that calendar and start using it right away. So here's the other one. We'll click that to turn it on. All right, so now we see the calendar entries for both of these users. Now, in order to get this information over to Thunderbird, I'm going to click on these three dots, and I'm going to ask for a link. And it's going to show me a link in here. Go ahead and select that entire area, right-click on it, and choose Copy. Uh, I use Control-A to select everything. That's the easiest way to do it. Then right-click and choose Copy. Now, with that done, we're going to open up Thunderbird. Now, right now we have no calendar entries because I haven't added the calendar. But if I right click in this white space over here and choose New Calendar on the network, Next, CalDAV, very important, the username that is going to be accessing the server, which I'll use the username that I've just recently set up. And the link that you just copied, you will right-click and paste in that area. Or actually, does that, you know, it doesn't even give you the option to right-click, so you'll have to do a Control-V. Con hold on to your Control key and V as in Victor. That'll put it in there. Hit Next. Give this calendar a name. You can choose anything you want. Doesn't matter. I'm going to call it Service Department. And you can pick a color for your service department calendar entries. Uh, I'll choose a custom color of ocean water teal. There we go. All right. Or maybe it should be just a little lighter than that. All right. And, you know, in Thunderbird, you really should set up an email account so that when you want to respond to calendar entries, it'll actually send emails directly from within Thunderbird. I'm going to choose Next and the calendar has been created and finish. 
Now, the last thing you want to do here is synchronize the calendar. This button in the top left corner, this will start the process off. And boom, just like that, everything's there. Sometimes that synchronization process takes a couple of minutes. Now, we can edit any one of these directly from here. And if we do, it'll edit that same information on the server. It will synchronize it. Now, we can, uh, if I, by right-clicking on this and choosing Properties, we can choose how often that calendar gets automatically synced. We can do it every minute, every five minutes, and so on. Depends on how mission critical things are in your environment. I'll make that one uh, five minutes, hit OK. And every five minutes, Sun Thunderbird will go out to the server, drop off any information you've changed, retrieve any information that anybody else has changed. To search for something, uh, up at the top you see all future events, events in the next seven days. You can look at this any number of ways. Uh, and if I type in the word, uh, for instance, I see heritage down there. Okay, it immediately restricts the list here to just this one. If I click on it, it highlights in yellow this heritage down there. Or I can double click on it. It'll bring that up for me. So it, this offers search functionality that doesn't exist in the web version of the cloud calendar. Now... Um, you can add any number of calendars you want. Um, I've added the service calendar here. I can now go back. Let me back into uh, Firefox here. And let's say I wanted to add the shared vessel calendar. Once again, I'll get the link to that. Control A to copy everything. Control C, or I can right click and copy to save it. I'll then minimize that. Come over here, right click and add a new calendar on the network. Next, CalDev, place it, give it my username. This is my privilege to access the server. I'll paste in the link that I just copied, which is the link for the, uh, the second calendar. Give it a friendly name, which I'll choose the same name that, what do we have here? Uh, this is called Shared Vessel Movement. Okay, we'll call that Shared Vessel Movement. Capitalize that. Okay. And calendar has been created. Once again, I'll click on that. Choose Synchronize. Give it you know, probably 10 to 15 seconds, I would say. And there you go. It's synchronized. From this point forward, it'll sync up automatically every five minutes. And you notice it's the color that I've chosen. If I want to modify that, I can choose right-click and choose Properties, and I can make that color any, diff any color I want it to be. I'll make it an earth tone brown. Okay? So that's how you do it. That's how you search for things. That's how you add calendars to Thunderbird. And I highly recommend you use Thunderbird for your calendars and not the web-based interface. The web-based interface is a great um, resource, but it's not as powerful as the clients. Uh, and this goes for the, uh, if you're using Android phones or the um, iOS uh, or iPhone uh, calendars, they also have search functionality and functionality that just won't exist on the website version. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Bye-bye.